I think the, a stamp is for an ounce. If you have like a three ounce birthday card or something, mm-hmm. you never know how many stamps to put on because the scale will say, okay, this costs a dollar and seventy four cents. Well, how much did the forever stamp cost? How much is it worth now? How many do you put on? When I worry about putting way too many stamps on, and our letter carrier said, well. It's a forever stamp. That's first class mail. It can, it, it, can, it can be anything. <laughs> yeah. So I may just send myself a heavier envelope one day and see if it comes back tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Well, good luck with that. that work. If, if we had ever, All if right. we had known what we know now, when the first forever stamps went on sale, we could have bought a lifetime supply then, sa- really saved some money, and that'd have been good, you know, for seventy-five years or something. Glue left. <laughs> yeah, they're probably k- taking shortcuts on that glue, not sticking them stuff. I'm glad you called. It's good to well, hear you from guys, you. You guys are fantastic. Oh, um, enjoyed our little time the other day and looking forward to a repeat. And um, we will talk before then. Okay. Yes, sure, yes. you bet. All right. Tell Ann we said hello. Tell Ann hello. I okay. hope she's feeling good. She's, uh, she's making some progress now. Thank you. Good. She's making some progress. I thought good. that was feeling well. well. Feeling well. Okay, good, well. Hope she's better. She's feeling what? weller and weller. Okay. Good, good. Right. That's a law firm, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yes. Weller and yes. weller? Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, keep listening, W-I-N-G. Thank you. Love you guys. I <laughs> love you too, Andy. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. All righty. Uh, a friend from the past. A blast from the past. There we go. Our friend Andy. All right, so we did the postage stamp thing. I'm going to lay that aside here. All right, now, uh, Andy has uh, joined us today, and you can too. Here's a number again. We're live this morning, and uh, looking at the clock, it is 11.17 here on Monday morning. Right now, we're going to take your calls a little bit longer at 336-932-1881, 932-1881. Okay. I wanted to mention Heather. Um, the, um, the nice, friendly person that I saw at Walmart in Mayadan recently who helped me with my purchase. Uh, she went above and beyond. She was friendly and courteous and knowledgeable and helpful and all of those words. So uh, I always like to acknowledge good customer service. And, you know, we said recently we had that somewhere, and I can't run out when we're going to mention it on our next program. Remember where that was? We were so pleased with somebody. Was it someone at a restaurant or, boy, I wish I could remember now. Well, we had two really good um, wait people in Greensboro, one at Texas Roadhouse, one at Longhorn. Mm -hmm. Eating steaks. But that was out of the county. Yeah, it was somebody locally. But uh, So uh, I do want to, from time to time, um, give you an opportunity to phone in. On this program, if you would like to tell us about a business, uh, give them a free plug if you've uh, enjoyed um, their uh, good service and what they provide or what they do for you. We could get in a plug for heat and air controllers. We had a issue here recently, and boy, they were Johnny on the spot. Or is that Steve Underwood on the spot? And, they, you know. Well, yeah, but, but Steve, Steve pretty much... They're they're always pretty responsive. Yeah, st- I don't know. Does Steve really do that much? I think he does. I mean, yeah. well, he's pretty much the boss. Yeah, he's yeah. the boss. Um, I can't remember. I don't know who the two who were the two fellows. I, I've got their names in the yeah, file over but here. But he was so but, nice. I yeah. mean, he just. You know, I'd have to roll across the floor to get it. You know, are you sure this is okay? No, I, you know, yeah. I'd I have can, the thermostat replaced. Yeah, and he was, you know, wanted to make sure it was okay the way he did that, and you've got a paint around. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, I, it's yeah. fine. It's fine. Really, I'm, are you sure now? I can do this, and I, he, he was really nice. There so, were two of them. Yeah, if uh, if you'd like to tell us about uh, someone uh, who's you've enjoyed good customer service with. In the area, let us know. Well, uh, New Girl Scout cookies, um, a New Girl Scout cookie coming out. I've heard about the, I put this on our Facebook page the other day, fudgy brownie. But, you mm. know, you're not big on fudge or brownie, so this mm. would not interest you at all. Mm. They're called Adventure Fools. Adventure Fools. Chocolate, well, brownies are okay. Yeah. They have nuts. Um, 
Chocolate cookies filled with a hefty dollop. You don't hear that word every day. A hefty dollop of caramel flavored cream Ooh. and a hint of sea salt topped with a chocolate drizzle. Ooh. You got two good words there. Dollop and drizzle all in the same sentence. Wow. Uh, available in January next year. Number one Girl Scout cookie is? Samoas or Thin yep, Mints. Yep. Uh, Samoas. Used to be Samoas. Thin Mints. Caramel Delights. Uh, number two is Tagalons, peanut butter patties. Really? Mm-hmm. Three Dozy Does. Where does Thin butter. Mints come in? Thin Mints is number four, since you asked. Wow. And then we have Toffee Tastic as five, and then S'mores and uh, lemon and shortbread. and that I thought s'mores was number one. Uh, that's Samoa's, the one I like, those caramel delights with the coconut. That's the same as s'mores. Mm-mm, it's two different things, apparently. Yeah. No. According to what I saw on my um, Girl okay. Scout post, yeah. Well, I, th- I thought caramel delights used to be s'mores, and they changed the name. Uh, no. Well, what's a s'more, then? It's kind of like... Um, S'more. <laughs> it's got the you know same type. We have to check on that, I guess. Because um, we did some s'mores here when the girls were here. We haven't done this program since. And I don't our, like our s'mores. granddaughters. Were here. I'd rather just have marshmallows. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd rather just have the chocolate. Give me the chocolate and some uh, graham crackers and mm-hmm. peanut butter, and I'm good. Okay, let's see here. Uh, I did a. Uh, we were with some friends um, over the weekend, and I uh, asked a, a riddle. And um, it was riddle time, so we're going to throw that out for you right now here. And uh, and you jumped right on it, and you had the correct answer so fast. I was so impressed with that. So I'm going to ask it here. Should have asked this to Andy while he was on the line. Here's our riddle for the week. What is it that occurs once in a minute, twice in a moment, and once in a million years? So we'll let people kind of think about that a moment before we give them the answer. What is it that occurs once in a minute, twice in a moment, and once in a million years? Okay. And uh, while you are thinking about that before I give you the answer, I've got to reach up here and get my community calendar notes because uh, the next event at the Blissful Ridge Art and Wedding Venue in Wentworth is coming up uh, soon. It is... um, Let's see. I got to find it right here now. It is Sunday, September fifth. The Legacy Motown Review. And that Sunday, September fifth, at three doors open at two. So I'm going to give Jarrett a plug here. Get more information at blissfulridge.com. Okay. What time is it? At three. Doors open at two. All right. The answer. What is it that occurs once in a minute, twice in a moment, once in a million years? And the answer is? The letter M. You are so right. The letter M. I wish I had a prize for you. Wow, that's good. All right, here's one. Uh, see how good you do, how well you do on this one. What word, you may need uh, paper and pen on this one. What word of six letters? Okay, hang on. Okay. Do I have a pen? I know you have a pen. Right there in the cup. Yep. Okay. All well. right. Well, I, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> try to try to save the microphone there you if you possibly can. Yeah. yeah. What word? Well, you you moved the microphone completely out of your. Well, I can't do both. Okay. What word? Uh, okay. You got to get that to the side every there, sweet. Annette has completely rearranged. Well, you're not that tall. <laughs> <laughs> well, how can I do both? There you are. Okay. Uh, well, I just thought you might want to figure what word of six letters contains six words. Besides itself, without transposing. Okay, what now? What? <laughs> Tell me again. Okay. What word of six letters? This is a word has six letters. Uh huh. It contains six words, besides itself, without transposing. In other words, the word has all of these words in it. There's a word of six letters. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And it has six words in it. Correct. Besides itself. So I make seven, counting the word. This is a good one, isn't it? Not quite as quick on that as you were with the letter M. All right, you want me to give you the answer here? You 
You ready? Oh, she's thinking. All right. What's it start with? Starts with an H. This is hard. This is a really difficult one. So while you're thinking on that, I have a story I wanted to share. So let me do that real quick. I just saw this this morning. Um, word uh, to computer folks here. Your password should be at least 12 characters long. This is really crazy. According to a study at Georgia Tech Research Institute, your password should be at least 12 random characters long and include letters, numbers, and symbols if you want to consider yourself safe from pro-password hackers. 12 characters. That is really wild. It just, um, boy, too many passwords now. What was the, in the good old days when the only password you needed was get into the playhouse or the, you know, the <laughs> the tree house or whatever. Okay, I'm going to have to give you the answer. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. All right, the word, write it down here, herein. H-E-R-E-I-N. Herein. I figured it was something like that. Yeah, yeah. You got he, you got her, you got rain, you got in, you got here, you got air. Herein, yeah. Yeah, isn't that a good one? That's a good riddle. I like that one. All right. Keeps your mind sharp there yeah. working on those. Yeah, I've done... I used to do lots of riddles, like, you know, if you go into a room and, you know, there's a, well, I can't remember, a stove and a fireplace and a candle and. Oh, this is going to be good. You know, you, um, uh, match, what would you like first? <laughs> okay. Probably the mat. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, okay, know, that was a good one. Stupid stuff. That was good. Yeah. All right. A lot uh, of good ones. Uh, I want to talk about um, Mike Richards, the Jeopardy guy, real quick before we leave. If you get that microphone a little bit closer to you there. I know, yeah. I, I know you were not. Um, uh, you're, you're really far away there, sweets. <laughs> yeah, what about I'll just him? Br- <laughs> bring that down to you. <laughs> she. To the side of you there would be good. Not across it would be helpful. Then we can hear you. We don't want to miss any any words. There? That's good. That'll work. Well, you know, uh, he was uh, the host, named the host, but now he's he's out. Good. Yeah, he's made some, um, way, way back, he made some... Um, he was bad. Uh, ...offensive uh, comments. So I kind of went online this morning for the program. I wanted to see, well, what did he do? What did he do? Well, this is... This is old stuff from years ago, disparaging comments about women and marginalized groups. Marginalized groups. He said, uh, Jewish people have big noses, uh, slur for people with uh, mental disability. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Some more women comments here, and derogatory term for little people. So I, I don't know. It didn't spell it out completely. Um, what a jerk. Now, lots of stereotype things, apparently. So um, so he said, better, you know, I don't want to don't want to ruin the program, program here for my old friend Alex. So he's stepping aside. Good. So uh, now you like the lady, though, didn't you? Well, I don't yeah, remember. I can never know. Yeah, the weird to, name. Yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't know. She's That was a, a package. You know, you get Mike and you get her. I hope she gets it. I haven't heard. But I do want to tell this story. Speaking of stereotyping. Uh, because that seems to be the thing in the world today. Uh, But when our grandchildren were here, uh, we uh, did a lot. We haven't talked about that since uh, because we were uh, didn't do the program during that July, during all that. But had a really good time, lots of good memories. Um, But we went to the Children's Museum, Greensboro. And I thought this was interesting. Um, I can't remember what it was. might have been Addie or Leah, because Ella didn't go on that one, but... Anyway, so we were there outside in the, um, the whatever that is, you know, all the outside stuff. And uh, there were five or six kids playing. Um, and they, they were on the thing that goes around, you know, and you jump on and, you know, having a good time. And uh, I was with, uh, you know, I was probably 15 feet away. And I heard this little boy saying, it looked like he might be about seven or eight. You're stereotyping me. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. And uh, and the little girl said, what? I don't think she'd ever heard. She didn't know what he was talking about. He said, you're stereotyping me. <laughs> now, I have no idea what went before that 
uh, you know, 